Hey, what's up? Last weekend, I was given a bunch of strawberries, more strawberries than I'm gonna eat fresh for sure. So today I'm gonna show you how to make a little baby hand pie. That's perfect for portability and for a picnic. So let's get into it. So before I get started, I'm just gonna say it. I don't really like making pie that much. It's kind of finicky and it's not really my favorite process. Start to finish, there's a lot of like top secret moves or like roadblocks or mistakes you have to avoid in the way and I just don't like, that makes me feel a little bit anxious. I usually opt for something like a hand pie when I go to make it because you don't really need like the world's most perfect pie dough. It's a very sort of like laissez-faire figure it out as you go set up and I like that. The dough we're gonna be making here today comes together in a food processor in about five minutes. And to do that, you're gonna need 350 grams of all-purpose flour, seven grams salt, and 30 grams of sugar. I give that a quick pulse to combine, and then we're gonna add in 280 grams of chopped butter. So we're gonna spin the butter into the flour mixture, and we're gonna take it to the point where it's pebbly and well combined. We're gonna finish the dough with 90 grams of cold water. I'm gonna stream that into the dough while I'm spinning it on high, and it comes together pretty quick, like in five seconds, and you really don't wanna work it too much. And that's mainly because it'll be pretty hard in your food processor to keep spinning this dough once it's fully combined. At that point, I'm gonna throw it onto some plastic wrap and I'm gonna fold it up, kind of making like a flat square. And I'm gonna throw it in the refrigerator for 45 minutes while I finish out the fruit part of this hand pie. One thing that can kind of burn my butt about pie is when it's too sweet. Sugar is necessary. It balances the natural acidity in the fruit and it helps create a set jammy gel-like texture on the outside that creates a really tasty, delicious pie. But when there's too much sugar, it just tastes like generic sweetened fruit. I like to taste the fruit. These are super nice Mennonite strawberries and you know the Mennonites, they can grow a mean strawberry, guys. So we definitely wanna make sure that we're kinda of towing that line. If you like super sweet stuff, good on you, add a little bit more sugar. But I really love to keep that tart in balance with the sweet. Let's get back to it. So I'm gonna grab these strawberries out of the fridge, and like I said, they're perfectly in season. It's early June, they're from some local Mennonites, and it's just a reminder that strawberries are a very good fruit. They have a ton of interesting aroma. It's not all about the sugar in this fruit, which I really love. Anyways, I started with the quart, and I ate about 20% of them while I was cutting them. And we're just cutting them into rustic chunks. I'm breaking each berry into three or four pieces. I need 400 grams all day, or roughly three cups. So if you buy a quart, you got a full cup of strawberries to snack on while you cut them up. Once we're cut, we're gonna heat up a saute pan, and we're gonna add in our strawberries and 75 grams of sugar. We're gonna add about five grams of champagne vinegar or white wine vinegar here to sharpen the edge a little bit too. So I'm gonna be stirring these often and we're gonna cook them for about a minute until they release their juices and they look like this. Nice and juicy. And wait for it, amateur move of the year, I think? Yes, there it is, adding cornstarch dry into a hot, wet thing. It's a classic clump situation. You guys know we need to add a little bit of water to this cornstarch first. I'm a loser, I had to whisk this shit out of this on the fly to get it back to normal, all the while scratching my nonstick pan. So all I have to say is stay frosty out there, guys. Your boy was asleep at the wheel. This is about 10 grams of cornstarch, by the way. Once we get our fruit starched, we're gonna cook it on high for about two minutes. We're looking to bring a little bit of tenderness to our fruit filling and to concentrate the flavor a little bit. Another reason we're doing this initial step is to eliminate that sort of beginner mistake of having a fruit juice soaked bottom pie crust. That can happen when you add raw fruit in with just sugar. And if you're cooking the pie for a really long time, you might be able to get away with it. I've done apple pies that way, but Ah, no, dude, I like tender fruit in a pie. I don't want to crunch on anything. I don't want an el dente. Crunchy fruit in a pie is nah. Not for me, dude. Once we've got this fruit cooked off, we're gonna set it aside to cool. Speaking of cool, it's been 45 minutes. Our dough is nice and firm. So I'm gonna grab it out of the fridge and I'm also gonna grab my rolling pin. We're gonna unwrap it and lightly flour both sides. I use my rolling pin to smash it down a little bit to kind of flatten it and then I'm gonna break it in half. This recipe will make a single double crusted pie, by the way, if you wanted to use it for that. And I have used it for that. I used it for last Thanksgiving and for last Christmas. But today we're not going into all that detail. We're just keeping it a little bit more simpler. No blind baking, just a very rustic pastry dough and that's it. We're gonna flour both sides and we're just gonna roll it to the thickness that you like. And I'm definitely a crust guy from way back so I'm gonna roll it out a little bit thicker and then I'm gonna use an empty takeout pint container to cut this into rounds. I'm just kind of indenting it and then taking a knife tracing it around to kind of cut out a perfect circle. Once that's cut I'm gonna throw it onto a sheet tray. Do the other five for this sheet and then roll out the second chunk of dough. You should get 12 rounds all day. If you don't want to go through the trouble of doing these into circles you can just cut squares and fold them in half. That makes a triangular hand pie. 
die. And that's pretty cool too. You can pretty much make them into any shape that you want. What do I do with the scraps? Good question. I usually just chop them up and bake them while my shape pies are in the fridge cooling. And if there's some leftover jam around, I'm probably gonna do a little snack dog move and just drag it through that, but who knows? Once we have 12 cut dough rounds, we're gonna grab two of them and cut slits in one of them. The other one I'm gonna fill with about one and a half tablespoons of our cooked fruit. I'm gonna put the round with the slits on top and I'm gonna gently press that around to attach it. Then I'm gonna take my pint container from earlier, I'm gonna flip it over, I'm gonna press down to punch the edges. I'm gonna finish this off with a fork to give it that handmade grandma look and we're gonna set this aside. We're gonna repeat this for the remaining five pies and we're gonna throw them in the fridge for 30 minutes. This is really the only main traditional pie making thing we're paying attention to here. It gets you like 10 or 15% better product than if you were to just throw it in the oven room temperature. If you're in a rush, you really don't care about having a little bit of cracked pie dough, you can throw them in right away. I throw a generous amount of egg wash on these and then bake them in a 375 degree oven for 25 minutes. When they're the shade of golden brown that you like, we're gonna pull them out and set them aside to cool completely. These could benefit from being cooled on a wire rack, but they're definitely not good hot, so I say come back in one hour. Oh. Mm, that's flaky. It still tastes a lot like strawberries, which is not that easy to do when you're talking about a pie or pie filling. When you get a lot of sugar involved, it just starts to taste like sweet fruit, not exactly strawberry or the exact fruit we're looking for, but this is still very strong strawberry flavor. I mean, we started with good strawberries, that helps, but I didn't really add a lot of sugar. It's kind of tart, which I like. So that's it. An easy little hand pie that's portable and can be made with about half the work of a regular pie. Maybe the next time somebody gives you a glut of fruit, this is your move, or maybe even better yet, you trade them finished hand pies for their fruit. But the real reason I made this hand pie today is because this weekend I'm planning something special. I'm planning a proper little picnic and this portable handheld dessert is my choice for when I'm eating outdoors on a blanket. We're gonna have some meats and cheeses and some chilled sparkling wine, I hope, and some fried chicken that I'm making just for the occasion. So stick around, that should be the next video on this channel. As always guys, if you got value out of this content, please hit subscribe, tell a friend. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for sticking around and we'll see you next time. Oh,